In part two of my interview with Hadsel, I read excerpts from his text he sent to a runner, as well as accusations from the Deadspin article, and just simply allowed him to respond. Would you have stopped if you didn't get caught, or would this behavior have continued? You know, I think that that certain things probably would have continued. This is why I, I, I should have been fired. You know, like the drinking at practice, you know, with the plastic cup, you know. I think I always would have just justified that, that because it's at night, n nobody cares. I've had assistant coaches that had dated runners, and I didn't do enough to stop it, or I didn't, or, or I, or I just turned a blind eye to it and I just assumed it was a rumor. I don't want to make it seem as though that, there, there, that this was some kind of renegade program or something like this. You're talking about isolated snapshots over 15 years. You're talking about only a handful of things over 15 years. There was an in-crowd and the in-crowd runners were those who pay, were paid special attention to their coach and who would in return receive preferential treatment during practices and meets. Was there an in-crowd? Okay, there was an in-crowd, okay. The in crowd was a term, any girl in our program right now will tell you what the in crowd is. Everybody knows what the in crowd is. The nine women that get to run at the Mid-American Conference Championships to run for a MAC championship. Only nine can run. You know, I got like 26 women on the team. And everybody always referred to, we, we refer to the in crowd. You want to be part of the in crowd. The in crowd is the nine that get to run. You're, you know, this is, this is athletics. I mean, we're trying to create, this isn't, you know, kumbaya, you know. Uh, and it is in high school where everybody's got to, you know, um, participate in, in, in that kind of stuff. This is a, this is this is Division One athletics. We're one of the best teams in the country. You want to be one of the girls that gets to line up. We have special uniforms for the MAC championship that we don't wear to any other meet. This kind of stuff. And so we'll be at a meet. Say we're at Kansas, and one of the girls who was kind of on the bubble will have like a big breakthrough, and it's getting close to MAC championships. And I'll be like, Hey, man, welcome to the in crowd. And then big smile, you know, and just so excited because the in they. She knows what the in crowd is. The in crowd, that means I get to run at the MAC meet. There was a girl that wanted to quit, but you wouldn't let her quit, and that you told her that her family didn't love her, nobody loved her, the team is her family, and that's it. Come on, man. I mean, that, that story is so far-fetched. I, I, I don't even know how anybody could ever believe that story. Anybody that's ever been coached by me, anybody that even knows me as a human being would know I would never say something like that to somebody. I mean, I might be an idiot, you know, texting people I shouldn't text. I might be an idiot because I, I, I screwed up and had a relationship. I, I'm, I'm an idiot for a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? But shockingly, um, I, I, I actually, there, there are glimmers of me doing the right thing. One of the right things that I always did is if, I have, if I'm going to have a conversation with one of the women on my team, always, my female assistant coach is always sitting there, always. One thing that I have on my side in, in, in these situations is the truth, A of all, you know what I mean? And people that, that, that you can go to to back up what I'm saying. You know, there's no way that that conversation ever happened. It never happened. If it did happen, it would have happened in front of my assistant coach. And... There, there's no way that my assistant coaches at any time would be like, oh, I think it's a good idea for you to have that conversation with her. It's believable to people that don't know me because, because, of, because of how I act, because of my language, because of the mistakes that I've made in the past. It becomes believable. Do you know what I'm saying? So I created the whole thing I, by screwing up. If I never was screwed up, if I would just been more professional, then none of this would even happen. We'll have part three of the two hour interview tomorrow night right here on WNWO and it gets very emotional as he discusses his legacy at Toledo and his future. If you missed part one or want to watch part two again, everything will be on our website at northwestohio.com.